Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today I'm going to show you the best crafts in the hideout to make a ton of money, starting with my favourite station, which is the workbench. At level 1, this starts printing cash as soon as you build it through a variety of great crafts. There are broadly two ways to look at these crafts, either in terms of rubles per hour or total profit. Use the best rubles per hour craft when you're playing Tarkov or have your PC available, as these will be the most efficient to you, but you have to be there to collect and restart them. If you're going to be away for some time or logging off for the night, use the ones with the highest actual amount of profit, as the time matters less given the module will sit dormant once it's finished until you return. Here at level 1, my favourite craft is power cords to wires. This has been a staple of workbench profits for a few patches now and makes good consistent money. If you can snag the power cords even for 35k each and sell the wires for 18500, this makes 51k after fees. We'll be assuming for the whole of this video that you don't have Intel 3 for the flea market fee reduction, so if you do, then you'll just be making even more. Wires are amazing because if you bulk buy the cords, you can regularly get them for under 30k at the right time. The market moves around a lot on these, so it can be useful to buy up to 10 or so when they're going cheap, so you have a good stock to keep crafting even when the prices have gone up a bit. As for the wires themselves, as a buyer you can snipe them off down at 11k, 12k, that kind of region, but when selling, as things drift about, you can then put them in at a higher price if you are willing to wait for a bit. I'm still commonly selling them at 18.5k, but I usually sell them last if I'm doing a bunch of different sales, as either I go into raid or I leave and go do something else before putting them in, because it won't be instant if you're trying to get the best price possible. Wires are one of the single most profitable crafts in Tarkov both by total and by hour, however we do need another craft so that we can cycle between them. You get crafting experience for the length of time crafting and also for completing the craft, but if you don't cycle between crafts you get much less experience, so you have to swap back and forth to level it efficiently. The two PCB crafts are both good at level 1, and usually the DVD drives are slightly better, but faster as well, which helps to improve the profit per hour. Weapon parts are another good one, which we've spoken about before, as to make this work well, rather than buying a 209 from Skier for 29k, you can try to grab one from Fence. If it's a red non-functional one, adding the Ultimac and a pistol grip for 3k also works and makes this craft really efficient when done this way, but obviously takes a bit more faffing about. Onto the workbench too. The good crafts here are a bit harder to access because they typically require you to do something first. The craft that is by far making the most money at the moment is the Nixor lens craft. This is because Wi-Fi cameras are restricted on the traders and really expensive on the flea. To get these you need to have started the informed means armed quest for Skier after Friend from the West part 2, which once begun makes them available at mechanic for 402 euros. This is quite useful too for clearing down euros, yes you do need them later for some endgame stuff but in the early and mid game it's good to have a mechanism to use them up in a useful way and effectively convert them into rubles. This works similarly for US dollars on the other great craft in Workbench 2 which is for Eagle Gunpowder, but again you need to complete Spartor Part 2 from Peacekeeper to make this one work. This is because only then does Peacekeeper sell the M67 grenade, which is an input. On the flea, these are usually very expensive because they are part of another quest to regain trust with Prapor. But once you have access, this one is extremely good. Slightly less rubles total than the Nixors, but about the same rubles per hour in the top tier crafts. Next up, Flechette can be decent, but only really makes sense if you've been burning fuel using metal fuel tanks. Once they're empty, they can be used here, but the flea fees are really high. This one benefits a lot from Intel 3, as it's not usually the highest output of profit per hour or total, but can be used as a cycling craft potentially if Flechette is selling better than 900 per cartridge, and before you have access to the Nixor and Eagle crafts because of the input restrictions. As an interesting side note here, you can craft APM ammo, M856A1, SNB, AP6.3 and 45 AP in here. This will cost overall, as you're not doing one of the other crafts and you can't sell this stuff, but if you want to use it in raid, for example with the 556 weapons, there's no other way of getting this ammo if you're still locked behind the traders for it, so it can be an option. At the workbench 3, there isn't really much else that's super interesting. 9x19 rip is the only one that really makes money, but even then the totals and rubles per hour are low so I'd avoid it personally and just stick with the ones from 1 and 2. Onto the lavatory, this is mostly about fabrics. At level 1 you can make Kodura from sling bags and Aramid from packers and ripstop from scab vests. Kodura is usually the best one as these inputs are fixed from ragman, meaning that it basically always makes money. Aramid can work, but the price often dips below the required 15k to even return a profit at all. However, one use for this can be if you're having packers returned from the Punisher 4 quest, rather than just selling them to Ragman, which is 14k at best if they're pristine, you can use them in this craft here instead. There's also a barter for packers for lower half face masks, so this can make the craft work better too. Ripstop can work, but you can't go and buy the scab vests from the fleet. 
Instead, trade one slickers for a vest and use them that way. This also ties into the nutrition unit that we'll talk about later. Ripstop prices dip fairly often in the early game, so you might need to hold on to them for the prices to rise a little bit before it makes sense. Another one that I tend to use quite a bit is the Scav Backpack Craft. On its own, this doesn't really work well because it takes up a water bottle, but you can drink this down to 1 out of 60 and then use it in the craft. Water tends to be one of the more economical drinks these days since Aquamari got a nerf, so I'm using it anyway in Raid, and effectively it makes these free if you just keep the one use water bottle as a crafting ingredient. At Lavatory 2, we open up another easy craft which uses four UX Pro beanie hats to make a fleece. As you can buy these from Ragman as well, it's very stable and hard to lose money on, and is also an input for the Scav Backpack craft from before if you wanted to cycle them that way and save on the flea fees. To maximise your flea market reputation and get that third coveted slot, you need 30 reputation, which is a big number and takes a long time to get. So in theory, everything find in raid you should sell and any inputs you should buy, basically eating the flea market tax for the privilege, unless you can manage to snipe stuff cheap and sell a bit higher, which helps a little bit. But this is why if you do want to max your reputation for the slots, you shouldn't stack crafts, but it just depends if you want to save a bit of money on fees at the expense of a bit of reputation progress. The other big one in this module is the magazine case. It is great because it is one of the highest total ruble output crafts that you can do, and in the lavatory the others that are decent are typically quite quick to cycle, making this one the perfect overnight craft. In fact, the existence of this craft is why I suggest using expeditionary tanks in my fuel video, because clearly this craft doesn't really make sense to do with full fuel tanks. You'll do this once the fuel has been used in the generator and is now empty. A really good one. Outside of these, one that could be interesting to note is the Class 4 Yule Rig Craft from a 6B13 armour and an Umka Rig. If you're still struggling for Class 4s, grab an Umka when they're cheap, say sub 15k, and combine with a zeroed 6B13 that's come back from insurance, this could be a good way to recycle them into a new Class 4. It does take a long time, so I'd say only use this overnight, if you want to use the armour yourself, and if you don't have mag cases to craft either. Similar to the workbench at Lavatory 3, there aren't that many new interesting profitable crafts that we get access to. There is one for the TV110 rig which uses a Corrund, which again if you're getting these returned broken, after a few repairs from insurance and it would be getting junked otherwise, it might be a consideration to make this. The TV110 rig is worth about 82k using the barter at Ragman 3, so with two cheap TV109 rigs and a ripstop it might be worth it, although it's a bit of a specific one. Onto the nutrition unit. At level 1 there isn't really anything great here, it's mainly good for task items but better money crafts don't come until level 2. Then we open up the condensed milk craft which can be good as these three sell for 47k to therapist together, however as sugars slowly increase in price this eventually doesn't work anymore. The other one that can be decent is the slickers craft and you can use some of this yourself for bartering for scab vests in the ripstop craft that we mentioned before or just using it for the quests that require it. At level 3 we access the hot rod craft which technically does make money if you get your inputs at good prices and sell them well, and taking 12 hours base is another overnight craft contender. Dan Jackiel the whiskey is another one that can work well and is an alternative place to put your used waters at 1 out of 60 rather than using them in the scab backpack craft which makes it fairly economic if you're using these to replenish hydration anyway. Of the ordinary stations, the med station has the most min-max shenanigans going on in my opinion, but firstly, at level 1, we have the pile of meds to AI2 craft. This was great early wipe, but it's also really obvious, so this has driven the prices of AI2s down on the flea to around half of therapist sale value. This makes it very borderline, but it is quick as a fast cycler. The CMS craft kit is about break even, but you can use low car med kits to do this one, meaning that it practically only takes up the med tools. This is the same for the Salewa craft which is also accessible at MedStation 1, and although requires two of them is more efficient if you again have them on low durability. If you are using car kits in raid like I do, these effectively become free at a few points remaining if you are careful when healing, and once crafted allows you to sell the Salewas on the market and recycle much of their original value. At level 2 we open up the pile of meds craft which is the main staple of this module, making money most of the time. Alongside this the IFAC craft can work well, but you have to be careful on the sale prices. I tried to get them out for 18,500 each, which makes it kind of worthwhile. Moving up to Med Station 3, there's a few special ones in here. The SJ6 craft can make money on its own, especially if you sell them at peak hours for maximum demand. So can the Grizzly too, but this is also a good chance to utilise low usage alu splints. As usual, any quality will do for the crafting, so use them down to 1 out of 5 and then use them in the Med Station. Similarly, the AFAC craft is great and super efficient when using low durability IFACs to get a new one cheaply, but the king of the min-max goes to the Propotol craft. 
If you're using ibuprofen and golden stars as long-term painkillers, maybe for pre-medding, at one use each, they can be turned into propitols. This is crazy value, but you need to be using the inputs regularly in RAID for it to make sense. The remaining handful of modules are pretty easy. Intel Center from level two gives you access to the flash drives craft, which is almost always the best. There's useful ones in here for quests as well, but monetarily, flash drives are usually the best craft, followed by the VPXs. These take a very long time, so usually I don't worry about crafting skills in here too much. The water collector only does one thing, which is to make purified water. For one filter, it only consumes 66% of it with level 1 skills, so this module is really valuable if you can get to it. The difference in prices between purified water and the water filters is really extreme, but unfortunately it's blocked by level 30, as you need water collector 3, which needs generator 3, which requires mechanic 3. Following on from the collector is the booze generator. This one is a bit questionable currently, with a standard fee on Moonshine of 28k at around the price that it's going for, which is 185,000 rubles, this craft generally loses money if just grabbing the sugars from the flea market. So unless you just want to use them yourself in the scav case module, or want to maximise your flea market reputation and crafting skills at a loss, then usually it's more economic just to sell the water and leave this one alone. Once you have Intel 3, the fee is decreased to 15k which can help, but just bear that in mind. By the way, there is a very useful website called Tarkov.dev, which I believe is based on the old Tarkov Tools website. Either way, it has crafting profits, barter profits, and all sorts of things taking into account flea market fees and some seven day charts for each item too, which is really cool. Go and check it out before you craft and it will help guide you to the best ones at the time. So overall, my top crafts are wires, DVD drives to PCBs, and Nixor lenses in the workbench with Nixor's best for overnight. In the lavatory, focus on the fabric crafts, mainly Kojura and fleece, and potentially scav backpacks with used up water. Do magazine cases overnight once your fuel tanks have emptied, as these are the best long craft for big money. In the nutrition unit, whiskey with 1 out of 60 water is the most efficient, with slickers and condensed milk behind, depending on the input prices. Hot rods are useful overnight if you can snag the super waters cheaply. Finally, in the med station, the pile of meds craft is the best per hour, and the grizzly makes the most money without doing any funny tricks. Just remember to keep any low durability IFAX, car kits, alley splints, ibuprofens and golden stars for use in the others, which makes them more efficient than this, but you need to be using the materials in raid, otherwise it doesn't work. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.